Okay, well, we're live. There we go, Paul. So we're going to talk about generators again. Generators. So we've talked about generators a few times, Paul, and it's a popular topic. But tonight we're going to say, in general terms, what do you need as far as a generator? How big or how small is appropriate? All right, so that's a loaded question. Sure is. Because we're going to talk about load. Right. So, yeah, there you go. No pun intended. But if you talk about generators and what size do you need, well, ideally, everyone has a you know whole house generator that just keeps things going as normal. You can watch your uh, Dancing with the Stars. Your air conditioner can come on. Has your and wife been asking all, about? All of your lights <laughs> and whatever when that summer storm or hurricane comes through, right? Uh, that would be I... the ideal world, right? You just don't miss a beat. Yeah. However... Mm. The, and you can get a whole house generator first to do that. First world problems. Huh? Right, yeah, first world. Now, you can get a whole house generator. You Typically, you don't actually hook it up to every last outlet in the house, but you hit the critical stuff, furnace, air conditioning, uh, you know, some outlets for kitchen, TV. So you can live just very well with a whole house generator. You sure. But there's a downside. What's that? What's the downside of getting one generator that's permanently hooked up all the time okay. that's going to power everything you need? What's Do you want down? to know? Am What's... I allowed to reveal this? Uh, there's no advertisers we're going to lose or anything like that? Well, people can get cranky, so, but that's okay. okay. We're being honest. We're I, the handy guys. All right, right? so we're... I have some experience, not with a house, although I, I actually yeah. have a vacation home in the extended family that has a generator, but we haven't had to use it, but has it. But I've had experience from a IT level with a generator that's uh, bigger than most homes, but it's it's still the same kind of generator you would get for a home, and it's for an IT room or data center. Okay. And here's the downside. One is obviously cost, right? So you're going to be paying for professionals to install this thing. They may have to put in a concrete pad. They may ha they have to put in an a, a automatic transfer switch. It's all got to be wired correctly. It's not for the typical, it's really not for the homeowner, period, to install, right? Right. If you uh, go, you have... But uh, once it's done, you got those upfront costs, right. you're done, right? No. No. You're not done. Because like buying a car, and it's going to cost you like buying a car, uh, mm -hmm. you have to maintain it. It requires oil changes. It requires maintenance to the, uh, to the board. The, the, uh, they, they often have like monitoring services to make sure you, you know, it's running correctly, errors, uh, checks for okay. errors. It, okay. It'll notify you when it comes on and off. You have so to test it. It's like an alarm system where it's connected up to central yes. station monitoring. And, and there's <laughs> boards, there's security systems in it, and there's boards, and they can go bad. And also, you got to run it like a car. You would never buy a car and let it sit because you know what happens. When you let a car sit, then it's just never going to run right again. It's made of what? Steel. And steel rusts, and you have in problems right. with it. Just Well, don't these whole house generators start up periodically and do a diagnostic and all of that? Yeah, but you have to do that. So you have to set that all up and you have to have someone monitor. What happens? Okay, so that sounds great. So you have it self-test, right? Right. Okay, well, what, oh, last week it failed. And it notified you. Okay, what now? Now you got to call the uh, guy who installed you gotta call. it. Or, it, it, you know, the, a lot of them, have, it's automatic. So it automatically alerts them. Okay. They call you. And say, oh, it failed last week. Right. We Would you like to come out and, and check some it? Maintenance and whatever. There you go. So you got to pay that. Oh, sorry, some uh, component failed. We got to replace right. it. You got to so, the spark plugs or whatever. Yeah, it's or maintenance. The mouse got in I've there. had to replace the, the, these computer boards on mine. I've had problems with uh, infestation. Of <laughs> it was actually ants. Ants got in it. Ants like warm areas in the early spring. So my uh, generator was invaded by ants. Well, that's weird. And what happened is they all <laughs> crawled into the generator, and it's, a, it's as big as this room, practically, and they got into a outlet. There's an outlet in it that services the, uh, the uh, diesel heater. The, uh, uh, there's a heater for the... Glow plugs in the, or the preheater? Yeah, there's a heater to keep it warm enough so that it'll start up. Yeah, yeah. And they got into the GFI outlet and, and tripped it. And so the diagnostic failed that checks for the block heater for the right. diesel engine. So what so. we really wanted to talk about was how, that. how big of a generator yeah. do you need? So Okay. So, so that's uh, ideal, and you may need that. Right. Okay. But you may just need a generator for, say, some medical device that's in your home that some person in your family needs to have running 24-7. Like, like a CPAC machine at night. Something like that. Or, or you may right? need a I generator just for a few lights and a fan. 
to keep you going, like say in the summer months, if you have something knocks out your power, or you may need a generator for you know some basic things, or maybe something in between. So you need to keep your furnace going, or mm -hmm. a fire electric fireplace, or mm -hmm. electric heater, or sump pumps. If, right. Right. So th those would obviously be critical if so, you're, you have a basement or so something. So here's what you flooding. do, I think, is you you go through the process to determine how big of a generator. This is like one of the smallest ones, right? We've talked about the inverter, the Honda inverter, and the Generac inverter generator. And these are really equivalent to one circuit. So in your house, you have the circuit breakers in the basement or yeah. wherever. One 15-amp circuit. So whatever can be on one circuit would be roughly equivalent to what this can handle. So your air conditioner, forget it. Electric heat, forget it. Um, sump pumps, probably forget sump it. Sump pumps, maybe one sump pump. A real small one. A small sump pump. So you go through your house, you make a list of what in a power outage is going to be critical. And you got to think winter and summer. If you're yeah. in an area of the country where you have cold and where you have hot, what is going to be critical and what can you live without? Let's say the power goes out for a week. That's a long time. So if it's the middle of winter and it's, it's cold and you're in a cold area, you can you can you know put an ice chest out behind in your backyard, keep everything cold, right? You're, if yeah. you take all your yeah, food out of your refrigerator. Of and uh, if you have a fireplace, then maybe you're good yeah. there. But you know, obviously summer, if you're like me who has a freezer for when we buy a you know a cow or whatever, right. I don't want to lose thousands of dollars of beef <laughs> right. because of a power outage in July, right? Right, so you need to power your freezer and your refrigerator, yeah. a couple of lights. What else? You don't need air conditioner. You can, we, I can live without you it. You can live uh, without give your Give me air a fan, I'm good. And a fan, right? Yeah. So you, you look up all of the wattages, starting wattage and running wattage of those things, right. and see how it matches up to the generator you're thinking of buying. So obviously, it, in this situation, summer outage, refrigerator is going to be, I think they run around, when they're running, the condenser's on around 1,000 watts, yeah. start up wattage, maybe 1,500, something like that. And it's going to depend on the age. You so. can get something small like this. It's going to handle your refrigerator and you know a couple fans, something to charge your mobile, but not a lot of other things. That's right. That's right. So, But if you add all of those things up, let's say it says... 3,000 continuous running watts and maybe 3,500 peak. Well, you're going to need to go to the next step up or two steps up from this to get something that's going to be able to handle that. Right. And, you know, the reason why we did a show on the Generac and the Honda is because we like these little guys. They're, yeah. you, know, you have to think about the other, you know, you may not, you may have one power outage every five years or something. That's true. you got to store the thing. you got to move it when you need to use it. you got to fill it with fuel. And these guys are just little convenient devices right. for just getting you by. Oh, one other thing, know. Paul. So these, uh, these style generators, you can get two of them and you can hook them together so that they can work together and you can get essentially double the wattage. Right. But the inverters though cost more. So you can get the they bigger, do. heavier kind on wheels yeah. that are 5,000 watts roughly. Mm -hmm. and Probably for less than this one. For, yeah, you can get them for less than this. But again, they're gonna take up a big place in your garage. To move it, you better have it on wheels because you're not gonna move it any <laughs> right, other way. Right. Um, you, and, it takes more fuel. Loud. They're gonna be you know, a lot louder than this, a lot louder than this. You never want to operate any of these, by the way, in a garage or anywhere inside. Right. You always want to go outside. I've known of someone where they had an accident with it, and you don't want it in <laughs> inside the house, or you could <laughs> light your whole house on fire. That's right. And also fumes and all the other things. That's right, because you, you can't fill these up while they're hot. Yeah. You can't gas them right. up. So you got to shut them down, let it cool before you gas it. Follow right. the instructions. they got all the, the safety precautions in those instruction right. manuals. So um, as they say, follow all of those. So, so we have a question that came in. We do. Oh, yeah. look at that. Hey, so, <laughs> cool. So All the right. question is, uh, it was about the inverters versus the, I think we've answered it, the inverter versus traditional. So the inverters actually, they have a couple advantages though, other than tend to be lighter weight. Uh, the other advantage is that they, because they invert power, uh, the way the inverter works, and I'm not going to get into the engineering of it, but it actually provides a very clean power source. That's right. That's great for electronics, computers, right. and things like that. Because sometimes in these, as the, 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 the power may fluctuate a little bit, you know, more volts, less yeah. volts, and things like that. And even on the normal grid, you may get that to yeah. a degree. But on a, on a generator running off of a, 
a gas engine, that can be a, a wide uh, variable that can be very uh, detrimental to sensitive electronics. Right. So the, these are the ones they would use. Uh, I know the CB and ham radio guys use these and stuff like that. Um, and the, the shortwave guys, you know, when they're doing uh, emergency uh, communications over shortwave. And the other thing is these are, you, uh, these have some other per uses. So if you have an inverter generator, I know some folks that are camping and other things, and they make noise. So I can't imagine at night yeah. in a quiet campground you could ever use this. But I've heard yeah, yeah. in different areas where it's like in the day or other things, you can run it off in a distance that you can actually use these. Now, when I go camping, I don't really want electricity. Right, but these right. days, but I haven't camped in a long time either. <laughs> so maybe I do because how often, you know, how long can I go without my you know, smartphone? You know, I took my kids camping five years ago. They were teenagers and we were in a campground that was mixed tents and campers and all of that and there was a couple people oh, that yeah. were running generators but yeah. fortunately they were far enough away uh, that I it wasn't a huge deal but you know they were sitting around their campers and they they had Christmas lights up and okay. they had music playing and they had uh, you know Whatever, they were having fun. So the bottom line is I think we've covered the, you know, we got whole house down to, I guess, the inverters are the smallest, but not necessarily the cheapest. Right. But they're the most convenient. So, and then something in between. So size out what you absolutely need. And right. then as far as installation. So inverter, you're just going to plug things directly into it. You're going to have to run extension cords outside to that product. Right. And you're going to need long extension cords if you have a refrigerator and some other things. Right. Um, and that's same with all the other uh, portable generators. Whole house, obviously, is going to be wired into the right, house. And the professional is going to hook that up. Yes. And other mid-size generators, you can get a transfer switch that you hook them up to as well. You're going to need an electrician to help ha handle that. Sure. The other thing is to consider is fuel. Now, uh, I know yeah, you can look at... That's a good at, point. Let's yeah. talk about fuel. So, if you're in, uh, so here's the situation. We have a... Um, I'm, uh, my relatives have a vacation home. Mm -hmm. um, in a remote area and in northern area of the country. And uh, the fuel of choice there, your, your only choice, they have no gas. So obviously natural gas is one choice. Now I haven't had personal experience with it, but I know the pr potential problems with gas are startup. Okay. The, it's hard to get them started sometimes. So you have to make sure you deal with a experienced uh, installer and manufacturer to deal with that because you want it to start okay. up. That's the issue there. In our case, we had to use propane because uh, the only choice in our case was oil or propane. And in winter months, it's easier for the propane trucks to get to get to the location than oil trucks. So that's okay. why propane was ultimately the winner. Okay. Um, they're smaller trucks. They can get up uh, dirt hills in uh, snow and so forth in the particular location. So you need to consider that though. Obviously, if your house has already got gas, for instance, Natural you want, you want sure, to look yeah. into that. But just right. keep in mind that that is for a whole house, you're going to have yeah. propane, right. natural gas, or diesel. Right. I guess, right. yeah. Diesel, diesel is very common in commercial, in right. commercial settings. So something like this, though, a small inverter, I'm pretty sure these are only gasoline for something like this. But there are ones that can run off of a, you know, a 10 or a 20-pound portable right. propane right. cylinder, yeah. like what you'd use for your uh, gas, gas grill. grill. Yeah. Uh, in fact, with the uh, Hurricane Matthew, I saw there was people in line uh, to get their their propane bottles filled up. And yeah. I said, "Why? Why are they in line to get their propane bottles filled up?" And I, ah, uh, yes, for their they're using it for their generators, or maybe they'll use uh, for their their grill outside for cooking, uh, perhaps if they're without. And, power. and you can get portable, yeah. So you can get portable generators, and you can get a plumber or or someone to hook up a gas outlet. If you have natural gas in your house for a generator that you that you then connect in outside your home, right? That's with a another flexible, quick, yeah, quick disconnect. Exactly. Line. Yeah. So that's not as common, but those are possibilities. But again, look into the issue of startup. I don't know sure. what the latest and greatest is, but that's sometimes an issue. So anyway, fuels. That's the other thing. Just keep yeah. in mind. Obviously, you know, if you have a serious major power outage, it's regional. Yeah. Which we've ha we had a number of years ago, and we also had it during the snowstorms a couple of years ago with all the ice storms. Then, if it's a really regional, you have to think about gasoline. So if yes, you're sir. smart, you buy some five-gallon jugs and you fill them up before 
<laughs> right. ahead of time because fuel can be hard to get. If you can't get out on the road, get that's to a gas right. station, you that's have to right. take those things into account. Whereas and you have, have gas, natural gas, that's not as much of an issue. That's right. So um, especially in hurricane zones, disaster areas, and so forth, if your power is out, the power might be out at the gas station as well. Yeah. And so even you say, oh, well, there's a gas station right, you know, I can right, walk true. there. Well, yeah, but maybe their pumps aren't working. Yeah. Maybe they're out of uh, power as well. Or maybe they've got a generator so they can run a pump or two. But uh, I've run into that uh, in some areas. So fortunately, in the United States, the grid is pretty good. If you're not having a hurricane or a tornado or a uh, major ice storm coming through, your power outages are limited. It's usually a tree falling down. It takes out a couple of power lines and maybe you know a thousand homes lose just power until they get the truck out there and you know half a day or overnight you're without power so in that case you know you don't even need to crank the generator up uh, perhaps just don't open the door of the refrigerator to let all the cold out <laughs> right. and uh, you know light a couple of candles or just go to bed early or whatever <laughs> oh, right? yeah. yeah those can be dangerous too so <laughs> flashlights <laughs> flashlights not candles right all right yeah. all right well I think that's about it for generators let us know if you have any questions uh, um, we don't have any more questions right now I don't nope. think so all right, very good. All right, well, thanks for watching The Handy Guys, and we will be back next week with some more live streams. All right, thanks.